you're not going to believe what we got to see here on day one at Blade Show 2023. Let's light it up. We're getting 200 sausage biscuits to feed the people of Blade Show. I don't. <laughs> oh. Free limited edition 2023 Blade Show sausage biscuits. Thank you. <laughs> What's up? We're here at Brotech with Matt. Matt. How's it going, man? Dude, thank you so much oh, it's for a taking some time out. So, uh, we're just getting set up today. This is Thursday before Blade mm -hmm. Show starts. And, I mean, we walk by your booth and we see some absolutely sick knives. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you guys are known for amazing designs and really innovative finishes on your knives. Um, but let's talk about some of the knives that you guys have brought here sure. to Blade Show. Yeah, so it's our biggest blade show in the history of Protect Knives. We have over 78 versions here at the table, 150 all the way up to $14,000. It's the most Protect we've ever had at a blade show. It's so much fun. We love what we do. Right. You know, the fact that every single month we get to tinker with our own knives, make different finishes, we're not making the same skews all year round, we can't get enough of it. The worst part is that we're not going to a show every weekend. If we did, we would never get anything done. But the fact <laughs> right. that we can come here and show off everything we can do, there's literally a protect for every type of customer. Yeah. So this is a nice chunk of it. We have so much more, uh, but I felt like these are probably the, the, the favorites of the show. Oh, absolutely. I so mean, these kinda, things are gorgeous. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go down the list. So Malibu Flipper, probably our best seller for the last three years. We have a few pretty good gems with Sapphire Blue. So it's a stonewash finish and then a zirconium nitride, sapphire blue finish on top of it, abalone push button, super slick Malibu ball uh, bearing flipper action to it. Oh man, that is, that is just absolutely nasty. And that's one thing, like, as far as fit and finish, you guys are so detail oriented. Thank so you. small details, like the button, the abalone button right there. That's something that not a lot of people really take that much time sure. to really do much with. And but you, you can guys go, do. you can go so crazy with the abalone finish. I'll, I'll, I'll pull this one ahead of time, right? You can go a titanium frame, 3D contoured, full abalone mosaic inlays, a Chad Nichols carbon Damascus blade, a titanium backspacer, 3D machine titanium clip. You can go the whole gambit. And for some people, it might be too much abalone. And some people, it's, it's the perfect one for them. Yeah, there's no such thing as too much abalone. Absolutely so to go not. from that same button flipping action, oh. super smooth, and then you can also capture that essence in a production limited knife run, which is a little hint of abalone. Yep. It's perfect. It's, it's very subtle. you got the subtle. whole spectrum of yep, it. Yep, absolutely. One of my favorite knives here at the show, it's a combination of gray and black. Kind of has a monochromatic finish to it. Yeah. Um, you know, again, a super basic Malibu in the, the 20 CV reverse onto blade shape probably our, our most best seller of the two blade chips between that and the Warncliffe. Right. But to do it in a new gray anodized pattern, it's super classic. That is just absolutely super gorgeous. Super slick action. And so then this one right here, like I'm, I'm a sucker for finger choils oh too. Yeah. So, I mean, seeing something, and of course that one's in Magna Cut right mm -hmm. there. I mean, just, oh, that is so smooth right there. And it's the same action, same detent, same bearings, but so much more knife. You can feel it fall shut a little bit faster. It's a little more aggressive. You get a little more purchase on it. Like, I mean, it just fits in the hand mm -hmm. so good. And you can choke up on it there. Everything about that knife is supposed to be built around ergonomics. That is the America's pocket knife, right? Yeah. Super easy to carry. You can EDC it every single day. If you overbuilt in every single regard, that's how you get to the Mordax. Yeah. You have more handle space, more ergonomics, the forward finger choil, the Magna Cut steel, yep. a thicker tip. So everything about it is a little more overbuilt. I would say it's probably our hottest knife for the moment. We're trying to make as many as we can. I know we're not keeping up. We're doing our best. You gotta <laughs> right. give us some time. This is the new honeycomb finish texture. We've been doing it for about a year now. Super, super popular model for us. We hope to make more. For this show, we brought 50, so they will go quite fast. Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll try to ramp it up as the year goes on. Now, of course, you guys do amazing flippers, but you're really known for your automatics. We are, yes sir. And your action on your automatics is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. We're talking really snappy, 
good power. It's not going to fly out of your hand, but it's still a really strong. Yes, sir. You, you're not. <laughs> there are some automatics out there that you're wondering if the blade's actually going to make it sure. all the way open. But you also have the opposite where they fire so hard that they rebound a little bit. Exactly. And trying to dial in that exact spring tension, the fitment, how strong the hardware is to hold up over tens of thousands of flips. Um, I mean, we go crazy over it. Uh, our spring companies probably hate us for how much tinkering we do just to dial in that action. You know, we do as much like in-house capabilities as we can, machining the parts, dialing in the parts, and then the last section of it is always done by hand. Yeah. Hand assembled, hand fit, hand sharpened, you know, making sure that all the time and love we put into making the parts and components come together well with a hand fit finish. Right. And so you get the combination of both when you buy from Protech Knives, all made in Placentia, California. So that's the Trizola ATCF. Lastly, we won Investor Collector next of the year with the ATCF model. It also won Collaboration of the Year with Bob Trizola. That ATCF is one of the oldest folding knives in the history of tactical knives. And now we make the automatic version of it. Right. So that one has fat carbon, um, white storm carbon fiber. Yep. Super nice. Again, little hints of blue, black, white, glimmers in the sunlight, pearl button on it, magnet cut steel. It has the same mill titanium pocket clip you would find on a custom Bob Trizola knife. Yeah. That's, and that thumb ramp on the backside just instills confidence right there. Got a little bit of jimping there. That is absolutely beautiful. And then kind of going from like a fancier knife to a, a extreme opposite polar end with a tactical version, it's one of the reasons we like the ATCF so much because there's so many different looks for it. This is the ATCF operator. So no logos, a tritium glow-in-the-dark button, super aggressive knurled black G10. It's actually the model that Bob Trizola carries himself. It's his wow. daily carry, which is it's pretty cool to see. That is pretty cool. Titanium DLC pocket clip as well. You know, and again, on these super lightweight aluminum chassis, it has the perfect balance to it. Yeah. We really enjoy that. Um, you know, if you buy stainless, bronze, or anything like that, you will get a little more heft in the handle. Uh, but generally, most of our knives are aluminum. They have the best ergonomics and that weight saving balance as well. Yeah. So we like it quite a bit. That is gorgeous. Now, next up is the one that uh, Isaac and I have been drooling over. And this is one of the most gorgeous knives I've ever seen right oh, I appreciate here. it, man. This thing is just absolute beauty. So first, let's talk about this feather, so this feathering right feather here. Feather texture pattern, it's one of the longest running patterns to run in the shop. It takes, you know, probably about 40 minutes just to mill that feather texture, but it comes out so gorgeous as a landing pad right under the clip so that aggressive texturing doesn't get caught on the clip. Oh, it's yeah. a super subtle touch. And then, you know, can't ignore the rose gold blade on it. So if you fire that sucker open, rose gold blade, which is a zirconium nitride based finish, it's super durable and then matching hardware. Even the little clip screws on it are also rose gold. That is unbelievable. This one's a Blade Show special, so it's been serialized a special, a special for the show. There's 100 pieces. Yep. That and then just... general TR5 uh, modulation to it, so you have the extra safety to it, so you can keep it closed in the pocket if you want to, throw in a purse or something, you know, you know that it won't open on you. You also have a built-in glass breaker as well. Um, it is a very popular model in our tactical response series. Um, our most carried military knife is probably the TR3. And then the only one that is the runner up to it is probably the TR5. You get a few more functions out of it. Again, the glass brick is a nice touch to a deep carry oh, pocket absolutely. clip. Absolutely, yeah. That is just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. And that rose gold blade it's just so good. sets that off. And all the hardware to go along with it. Now, you guys also have some beautiful Damascus blades. And we're looking at these right here. Yes, sir. This is on a whole nother level right there. So that is our PT Plus. We came out this SHOT Show and we've done so many variations since. This is on the more custom level. This is a custom grid lock. That's what we call the texture on it. It's a 17-4 stainless steel chassis. It's a hardened stainless steel. It's super durable, more scratch resistant than say aluminum and titanium. And you get a little bit of heft on it. Uh, the grid lock texture that we just came up with, a black lip pearl button, and then a Vegas Forge Herringbone Damascus that's been Ooh. hand ground by Mike Erie. That is just unbelievable. Oh man. And so comfortable. Oh, in the definitely. Hand. Like, and that, that grind work is gorgeous. Oh. And it's so cool to see across our lineup. You know, you, you basically pay for such a high quality product, whether you start from the low end range of our product line to the high range. You know, as you get into the higher ends of our product line, you're paying for more of the hand finishing. Yeah. Right? So you paid for the handmade Damascus, the hand grinding here. Yep. You could go up to a hand engraved knife, 
This one's going to be by uh, Wade Oliver Wilson. He's in Texas. That is so, just absolutely beautiful. And I mean, this is artistry that, you know, you don't see a whole lot of. Oh, anymore. definitely. Just Even like, on the spine and on the backside of it, too. Just like it's pinstriping so on cars exactly. and stuff. It's, it's kind of along those same lines. You, it's, it's a true artist work that, that does this stuff by hand. And we've been great with so many different people. You know, uh, the Italians, we've done Wade Wilson, Bruce Shaw, Mick Tler. There's so many different engravers with so many different styles of engraving. One of the ones we wanted to go with for Wade this year is to go into his past when he was in his 20s and 30s. He actually was a motorcycle pinstriper. Nice. And I, so, as far as see. I know, it's the first pinstripe-esque engraving pattern, all done by hand. It's such a cool classic finish to it. So that's on our aluminum bronze chassis. It'll get some nice patina over time. Kind of gives that vintage car look. Right. Chad Nichols, Ladder Damascus. Again, a super cool piece. We already looked at the PTs before, but this is a pinstripe oh. Wade Wilson engraved stainless steel chassis. That's 17-4 stainless. That same Damascus blade that's been hand grabbed by Mike Erie. Vegas forged herringbone. So cool even to see the little borders on it that he's been all done by hand. The spine of it's super amazing. Wow, look at that flame work. That is insane. Kind of like the tailpipe, you know what I mean? Yeah. The backside as well. Such a classic piece. And it's one of the reasons we work so many different engravers, just to see what their style is, their interpretation right. of our models. You know, we have so many things in-house that we try to attack. It's always nice to see what a different artist might inflict onto our product line. Right. And to come to a show like this, we get to show all of it in the complete different range of our engravers. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh. That was one of the last minute projects right before we left the shop. We've been working on the show for about four and a half months. These were probably assembled three days before we left for the show. We had to overnight them here. So that's right off the machine. I was uh, full not titanium SDR. That texture. So kind of similar to our feather texture that we saw earlier. This is a, called a double feather texture, double the amount of texture on it. Also machined out of titanium, dual tone anodized with the blue and then the bronze chamfers on it. Right. And, and then Vegas Forge Spirograph. Isaac, feel that right there. Just because I'm having a hard time describing that. Like it, it's it's an actual texture. I didn't think you would like actually. A snake on the... Yeah, it does. It, it feels like a snake skin. Um, and it's funny, you know, it's it's obviously heavier than our aluminum knives, but to go from now stainless back to titanium, it's very cool to see all the difference in materials we're using as well. Wow. Still got that Protex snap. Yeah. 3D machine pocket clip. And classic blade shape. Oh, too. for sure. Super classic blade shape. And then this is one that just absolutely pops, and this kind of stuff has been super popular mm -hmm. lately. Um, so these are our unique Micarta Emerson autos, based off of the CQC7. So one of the projects we love doing for these shows, we work with JL Hansen. He makes G Carta, which is the material you see here, and he'll make a bunch of different patterns. And if you kind of scan through the, the display case we have here, you can see over a hundred of these different <laughs> patterns he's done for us, both in SBRs and Emersons. We buy a batch of these one-off samples from him. We machine them in the top scale that we want, and then we give the lids to our builder. We give him a handful of different blade finishes, different buttons, different hardware, and we do maker's choice on all of these. Wow. So you roll up to the ProTech booth, you find which unique Micarta speaks to you, whether it's not just the type of material that they're using, but if you like the button, if you like the blade, and you get to handpick the one that you like. That no, is... two no, no two are the same here. That's fantastic. I mean, that's. I mean, we're talking like mid tech when, oh, you, when sure. you get to that mm -hmm. because it's 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 basically a custom. Yes, sir. And that. So this is the first button that we've come across, and you guys do this type of button mm -hmm. a good bit. But look at the detail work in that button there. So it's a mosaic pin push button. So you take uh, an empty chassis and you put little rods in it, fill it in with enamel, and then slice it. Yeah. And it's how you get that really intricate mosaic pattern. And depending on what knife you see from us, different mosaic buttons will have completely different patterns. That is just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, Matt. Thank you so much, man. I gotta flip it back to you, man. So what's in your pocket? So right now, um, I've actually got a Microtech. Okay. Um, I've Ooh, got my little, uh, little Bounty Hunter, yep. GX70, um, OTF. Uh, but I guess my, my beater that I've been using a mm -hmm. lot lately um, has been my uh, ZT. Nice, 0308. nice. Um, I mean, that's just a good... Super overbuilt, yeah. super ergonomic, love it. I spend a lot of time out, outdoors and on the farm, so okay. yeah, that's that's what I use that on. So. Awesome, man. Absolutely. What are you carrying? So I have very similar to what we have here. It was one of the first gridlock 17-4 stainless oh. pieces off, the, off the, the line. Just standard DLC blade magna cut, so to be able to really thrash it around and see what damage you could do to right. it. I've had it now for maybe a couple months. 
even for a blasted and hand satin finish, there's very little scratches on it, and we really have thrashed it quite a bit. That stainless steel chassis, it's so durable. That's um, amazing. You know, to machine it in a hardened state is, is actually quite a feat of engineering. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you're talking about totally wearing out it. bits and yes, wearing sir. out end mills left and right. We almost destroy an entire engraver oh, that just to build I one don't doubt that at all, handles. yeah. I come from a metalworking background, so okay. I, understand, uh, I understand that completely, yeah. That's insane. That is absolutely beautiful. Matt, thank you so much, oh, man. Oh, it was a pleasure. You Thanks for stopping by. You guys are awesome, and thank you guys for having us, and uh, we always look forward to what you guys are going to have. Thank you. All right, so folks, I'm here with the one and only Ben Belkin. Ben, thank you so much for taking some time. My pleasure, I know you guys are getting set up. Uh, everybody's getting set up here, ready for Blade Show. This is Thursday before we start. Now, you've got a new knife here that is dropping very soon. Um, and you emailed me about this knife about a month-ish, maybe a little bit more ago. And uh, you sent me a video. And immediately I talked with Josh about it, our COO, and I was like, that looks absolutely insane. And we both geeked out over this thing, just watching the video, and I was like, I can't wait to get my hands on that thing. And we get here, and it is even more satisfying than I anticipated. That's just unbelievable. I mean, so, okay, you're known for your slip joints. That's, that's what you've been making for the last few years. That's right. So tell us about, so this is your, your doctor's knife. Correct. Tell us about what went into this new iteration here. So we're well known for our slip joint knives, modern interpretation of timeless design. But we're Jack Wolf knives, not Jack Wolf slip joints. And I've been thinking since the very beginning how to expand my product line but keep everything on brand, recognizable as a Jack Wolf. And so my rationale is I'm going to develop a modern folder that has the aesthetic of my slip joints and the same quality that people have come to expect. You'll find things like titanium, hollow ground S90V, traditional patterns, but with modern execution. And we can talk about some of the features of this knife if you'd like. So we call this the Gunslinger Jack. And this is our first modern folder. And it's patterned after a gun stock knife. We have a slip joint model called the Sharpshooter Jack, right. which was our first release. And so in order to develop this knife, we kept the same lines as the Sharpshooter Jack. We scaled it up. So this is 4.12 inches closed, 3.23 inch blade. So a little bit bigger for the taste of the modern knife collector. You'll notice that we have a full length backspacer that gives the aesthetic of a slip joint spring, but we've anodized it to match the color of the scales. In the case of your knife there, Purple Haze, in this one it's Arctic Storm. Where you would find the nail nick on a slip joint knife, we have a fuller and it's on both sides. That's gonna allow you to either middle finger flick it open or, oh. or just thumb roll it. That's and whether awesome. you're right or left handed. <clears throat> we also wanted to have a thumb flip, but I wanted it to be tasteful. And we managed to do that by just ex extending the spine a just little slightly. bit, just enough to get a real satisfying thumb flip. Oh, it takes a little sound. bit. Of, that yes. sound. Yeah, the hollow grind, which is what we're known for, a really thin behind the edge dimension, gives this knife a really satisfying acoustical sort of feature. And then lastly, something that's really important to me for when I carry knives, I prefer to carry knives in leather. I'm not a pocket clip guy. And our slip joints are sold with an included leather slip. Now, because this knife comes with a pocket clip installed, we're not including a leather slip, but we are including a titanium plug that's anodized to match the backspacer and the pocket clip. Now, we, at the show, we have three different colors of handmade leather with the Jack Wolf brand. And so if you prefer to carry your Jack Wolf modern folder without a pocket clip, you can use the included plug. And so that's going to look something like that. Oh. So we have limited amount of these knives at the show. They're dropping at dealers, including Smoky Mountain Knife Works on June 16th. I've got a limited number of these leather pouches at the show. Here's uh, the second color and then there's black. And then I'll have some of those on my website as well. That is absolutely amazing. And 
I gotta say, I mean, I've always loved your designs. They've been, like you said, timeless classics, but with a modern flair to them. And this is just a whole nother evolution of that. Like, this is just, it's honestly what I have been wanting someone to do, um, especially in this gunstock pattern, is make a modern flipper that is still true to that timeless design, but still got the modern accoutrements that you that you want um, for something that's fidgety. Exactly. And just absolutely gorgeous. S90V with the blade steel. I mean, that is, that's art right there is what that is. And you said it's taken you, it's been in, uh, about a year, or maybe a little bit longer yeah. um, to develop this. Yeah, it's been about a year in development. I, I was having, brainstorming this before Blade Show, got super motivated and inspired at Blade Show last year came home and immediately put this project into development. Had to get some schooling on the engineering and designing of this style of knife because it's outside of my comfort zone, but this community is so great. There's guys I could lean on who gave me the education on how to lay out the geometry of the mechanism and yeah. things like that. And so it took multiple prototype iterations of these to get it how I wanted it. Um, because I wasn't in a rush to bring this out, really. Oops. You know, I've got the slip joints that are kind of making their monthly runs. So I really wanted this to be right. And fortunately, I was able to get this done in the nick of time for Blade Show this year. Absolutely. That is gorgeous. Ben, thank you so much for showing this to us. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's more, it's more than I even expected it to be. And I knew I was going to love it. So absolutely love that. Right on. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you guys. Smoky Mountain, you guys have been an amazing partner. Absolutely, brother. So folks, we are really excited to announce our brand new X-Wing. Now, we do have prototypes available here at the show. We've just got 40 of these available. This is the prototype of the new X-Wing Ultra Tech right there. This is all Cerakoted 6061 T6 aluminum on the handles. Got the spear point blade right there, the dagger blade, double edge, M390 on the blade steel, and this thing is absolutely sick. Now, you'll notice right there, We've got prototypes stamped on the pocket clip. Now, we will be doing a production version. The production versions will have uh, serial numbers on them. Those will be coming out very, very soon. All you got to do to get signed up for that is text Rebel Scum to that number right there. So, 82643. Text Rebel Scum to 82643, and you will be signed up to get a first shot at that production version and it will be serialized. <laughs> All right, what's up guys? I'm here with Simon from Southern Grind. Simon, good to see you guys as always. Love you guys' stuff. And we were walking by the booth, saw you, and of course, you can't miss us, <laughs> but you guys have got some really cool new stuff coming out or that's just come out. And so let's talk about first, this right here. This is insane. And so like what do you have a weight on this right here because i can't a like actually describe this it's about three ounces yeah three ounces in that right there now what's that steel that's 8670m saw blade steel yes so we get about 13 of these axes out of one saw blade wow that's insane and so with with that kind of steel, these are gonna make good throwers. Oh yeah. The weight and rotation on those, we measured it out to make sure that it, uh, you're getting a good good rotation on each and throw. So you've got the front side sharpened here and this uh, tang right here is uh, sh super sharp and pointy right there Absolutely. as well. That is nasty. And four of these come in a pack. Yep, with a kydex with sheath the kydex that clips sheath. to your belt. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is too much fun. I. I need this on my next hiking adventure. Just oh or your my. next adventure to your closest hatchet house, At, right? <laughs> because we've got a few of them right there That's in Pigeon right. Forge and Sevierville. Absolutely. Now, what's the price tag on these? These at MSRP are going for about four hundred bucks. Nice. And you got the bottle opener built in, is that? We do. Uh, yeah. There's nothing better than throwing axes and drinking and beer. And drinking beer. Absolutely. Freaking lootly. Now, let's also talk about this one because we haven't seen this one yet until just now. Um, this is gorgeous and super slim, super lightweight. Let's talk about this thing. So this is the Southern Grind Penguin. 
we're bringing it back. It's a design that actually came out a couple years ago. It was Southern Grind's first flipper. Right. It's a. Fr it was our first frame lock. Um, it is full titanium scales on a multi-track bearing system. Oh, and this sound right here. Let's see if I can. Oh, that sound is so satisfying. That is insane. And a great blade shape that's gonna be useful for a lot of different tasks. Um, honestly, being a farm kid myself, that's that's like a great literal spaying blade um, for castration and stuff like that. Not to get disgusting for everybody out there, <laughs> but I mean, that's gonna be a phenomenal blade shape for a lot of different cutting tasks. And a good EDC size too. So it's full size, but it's not imposing. Right, and it's not full weight either. Yeah, with that, exactly. With full titanium scales, it provides the strength that you need, but not necessarily the, all the weight of a normal. Absolutely. Now, what's the price tag on this one? That one is uh, 400 at MSRP as well. Nice. That is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, you guys are making all of this in-house? Yes, sir. That is fantastic. Absolutely beautiful work. Love that milled pocket clip right there. Just, I mean... Southern Grind is synonymous with phenomenal fit and finish anyway. So, Simon, thank you so much, yes, man. Sir. You guys are awesome. And uh, I think uh, we might do the same thing we did in uh, Texas, hopefully. We'll see. Absolutely. Josh and Tyler are walking around, so it sounds we might good. have to do that. Sounds good. <laughs> we need to meet them in person. All right, folks. I'm here with one of my favorite people in the world, Price. Price Gerard from CRKT. And we've got some new launches from CRKT. Uh, designed by Michael Walker. Let's talk about these. This thing right here is absolutely gorgeous. So cool. Yeah, that's the Pursue. For those who don't know, Michael Walker is one of the designers who's invented a lot of the things that we just take for granted, like the liner lock or the ball detent. A real innovator, only makes one knife a year, real high-end art pieces, and we're very lucky to uh, partner with him. This model, the Pursue, has got fat carbon dark matter on the scales, which came out beautifully. It has got a little bit of micro milling on there as well really make it pop. Uh, it's got that super dense twist, damn steel blade. God. And the, the pivot's got real mother of pearl on it, which is really cool. And Real mother of pearl right there on the pivot. It's that's got, insane. And originally this one had his blade lock, which is a specific Michael Walker blade lock, and that's why there's kind of that roundness in the front. But we want the liner lock since he invented right? it. And then it's got the roller on the pocket clip right there. Exactly. So this if you're wearing nicer slacks, it won't tear them up. Gorgeous. This is absolutely beautiful. And the action on this, Ambi Thumb Studs, and it's so smooth. And that uh, that Damascus is absolutely gorgeous. Came out That's really cool. unbelievable. The now, we've got uh, a couple of different ones here. Yeah. So these are the monuments. So these are going to both feature that dragon scale kind of texture on there, which is kind of oh, harkens yes. back to some of Michael's earlier work. So really beautifully uh, milled into the titanium and then anodized. Um, this one's going to be featuring M390 with a Damasteel pivot. A Damasteel pivot? Yeah, if you look Nobody's close, ever done that. Really I don't cool. Know, I've never seen that. I mean, either. So that one's got that, um, yeah, that, it's going to have that rose Damasteel pivot on there with the M390 blade. Oh. Same style of the pocket clip, too, with the roller. Yeah. Great action. Partnered with Lion Steel to make these, so all that Italian is made. Gorgeous. And we have another monument as well. This one's a little bit schwankier. <laughs> Oh, that, uh, look at that. So you're going to have that, uh, yeah, rose damascus steel, kind of a, more of the silver anodization on there. Really, that, that dragon scale is so cool. Yeah. And Michael, he does things really awkwardly, too. We've sent people into his, uh, his shop, and they don't know how to work with his tools because he uses all jeweler's tools. Right. Really okay. Really interesting story. I, I really kind of nerded out when I started learning about Michael. And look at the spine on so that damascus steel blade right there, that <laughs> rose damascus steel. That is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful and the art pieces. Action is incredible. Now, what's the price point on these? These are selling for different varieties. That one's five hundred dollars, okay. four hundred, I think, and then we got around two fifty and three hundred for the other model. I wow, believe. that's not bad at all. Now you get some really high end models, and you're not going to be able to find a Michael Walker. Usually, his knives sell for over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and he makes one a year. That's really fantastic. cool. Just a really interesting character, and we're very that's lucky to work with him. Amazing, so. Bryce. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, this is super you, exciting. And folks, you can find all these available on our website, smkw.com. They're ready now. So folks, uh, we talked to Bryce from CRKT about the new Michael Walker designs. And we've got Michael here 
and Michael, thank you hey, so much for taking you, some time and talking to us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the coolest things, getting to talk to knife designers, I mean, this is something that I've been kind of geeking out since, uh, since I started working for Smoky Mountain Knife Works because I've always been a knife enthusiast and visited the store and I've been a huge fan of yours oh, thank you, and thank you. and designers like Gil Hibben and uh, Gil, all kinds Gil's of, an old friend yeah. all kinds of knife designers and I think the thing that our audience really enjoys and the things that I really enjoy is what got you into to designing and making knives well you know I I started making knives in 1980 so this this I've been doing it 43 years and uh, I was a silversmith jeweler make, making uh, uh, handmade jewelry but it didn't have any mechanical you know there was something missing for me because uh, I'd always been into mechanical things from the time I was a little kid so uh, I rehandled some factory knives that sort of you know uh, back then you know where you started then I started making slip joints that's where we all started back, right back in the 80s that's where if you're gonna make folders you learn from there and, uh, and it just uh, uh, the liner lock came about I was looking uh, for something I could make with simple tools that I didn't need to turn around in my hand to unlock, and uh, uh, that's how the liner lock came to be. But, but uh, yeah, it's been an interesting journey over over these years. But uh, um, and a lot of other locks. Th this was a blade lock, where, right? You know, uh, but and that's uh, why the pivot is is kind of the, there's a lever the way it is. where the button is. There's a there's right. A, the lock is, is is there. They they made Columbia River made that for. A, few years back, we, we think about 1990s yep. in there. Yep, know. I can remember that one. Oh, you're young. You, uh, you look too young to remember back there. Right? Oh, I'm yeah. a little older than I look. Oh, okay. <laughs> Show business has kept me that yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, absolutely wonderful designs. And uh, now Bryce was telling us, like, when people come into your shop, they have a hard time understanding how it works because you use different tooling than most knife makers do. I'm real old, old school, you know. Um, I got a lot of old, old equipment that I've collected over these 40 some years, you know. And, um, you know, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a d different process. I, I, I make about four or five knives a year working full time. Nice. Um, uh, maybe one, one of those will be a liner lock, the other's usually more complex, uh, right. upper scale pieces. Some of those every year or two, one with the zipper blade, which I'm yeah. uh, Now, where do you draw your inspiration from? Is it something like, did, did stuff just pop into your head and it just... You know, I, I go about it a little, a little differently. Most, unless the knife has some distinct feature that I have to contain mechanically, like these dragon scales, then I'm basically just working from, from a rectangle for the handle, rectangle from the blade, and as I go through the process, um, eliminating till I get get a shape that I like. I'm right. Not, I'm not starting with a with. I don't know a lot of times when I start what that's what gonna it's going to end up like. Yeah, yeah. That's it, really it's, cool. Uh, sometimes it's a good surprise. Sometimes you know uh, you, you 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 go back and uh, make some changes, but but uh, it keeps it interesting for me that way as well. Absolutely. Is that, is that, I don't know, you know, I get to a certain step and then I figure out that the next, I get the mechanics, then uh, move on if I'm going to do, go, go, you know, gold inlays or something right. in a more artistic piece, and then I figure that at that step. But I don't know what that knife's going to look like when I start. That's really end. cool, and, and that's one thing that I find fascinating because, I mean, everybody has their own way of approaching it, and yeah. that's, that's a really interesting perspective because I don't think I've ever met anybody that... Uh, approaches it quite like that. You kind of let it shape you as I, you shape I do. it. it uh, I've always thought that the best ones were the ones that I didn't get in the way too much. You know, <laughs> I kind of let it let it go, you know what I mean? You didn't, I, uh, but I started out using patterns like everybody at that time, you know, I made little cardboard patterns and things, but it is uh, skills developed and, and over time, I, I, I uh, was able to as long the mechanics of the lock I have to figure that out mechanically, right. mechanically and know that and I'm starting from that center and working out and then uh, so it, it's uh, you kind of get the nice little surprise at the end if it all comes, <laughs> if it all comes together absolutely well Michael thank you so much you bet thank beautiful you work and uh, thank you for taking time out of Blade Show here yeah, for us yeah well thank you appreciate it 
So folks, that's just a little bit of what we got to see on day one here at Blade Show 2023. Stay tuned because we got a lot more coming your way.